In today's video, I'm going to show you the single best way to color grade your videos or even photos on DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. So DaVinci Resolve on iPad is nothing new, of course, but so far it just hasn't been that useful because the screen is just too small to really judge the image and to be productive. So I found a completely new workflow that lets you see A, a much bigger preview and B is just much simpler and feels kind of like it's made for the iPad. Now, I just recently dropped the video where I explained this whole workflow in depth on a desktop, but this of course applies to the iPad as well. So make sure to check the other video out. For this one, you will just need an iPad, a Bluetooth keyboard and a mouse, or you can also just use uh, the Apple pen or just your finger, whatever you prefer. So without further ado, let's dive in. Now, as you can see, I've already connected my mouse and my Bluetooth keyboard to the iPad. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, just go to the settings, uh, put your devices in pairing mode and just connect them when they show up here. Now, next, let's open up DaVinci Resolve. And as you can see, we only have the color workspace and the cut page. So we don't have all of the pages yet, but that's why we connected our keyboard. We now need to first enable all of the workspaces of the pages. Now on your keyboard, hit uh, option, command and K. And this is gonna open up all the keyboard customizations. Now scroll all the way down to uh, show page and open that one up. And as you can see here, you can customize um, a shortcut for each page. So you can use the same shortcut as I did, but you don't have to. You can just um, get rid of this one, click in this field once, and now you can just customize any shortcut you like. I'd recommend the shortcut that you can kind of memorize without looking it up every time and maybe use the letter of the page. So E and D and so forth. So once you did that, you can hit save and close it. And if you now hit the shortcut on your keyboard, it's going to show you all of the pages you just configured. So we'll go to media and I already created a new folder here, but you don't have to. And you can right click and import media. So I connected an external SSD to my iPad and we're going to use these clips right here. So we're going to select all of them with command and A and open, and this is gonna import them. And by the way, I'm working with a 25 FPS timeline. Um, of course, you will probably use 24 or 30, depending on uh, where you live and what your preference is. But those are clips that are partly shot in 50 FPS, so slow motion for me. And I select, usually select all of them, right click, go to clip attributes, and then I just select this one, so 25 in my case. And this is going to transform all of the clips that are shot in 50 FPS to 25. So it's going to be a slow motion clip. You don't have to do it manually in the timeline. So now let's go to the edit page. Again, select all of the clips and just pull it into our timeline. And now we get to do the fun part. Let's go to the color page. And first of all, it's important to set up our color management. Um, we'll go to the settings down here and go to color management. And as you can see, I selected DaVinci YRGB and Rec 709A for both the timeline and the output color space. This is the setting I've been using for a long time now, also on my computer, and it's just been working very well. Um, the viewer, what you see here is just very close to what you will see on YouTube, for example, in the browser. So I can definitely recommend this setting. Now, as you can see, this is quite a small image, especially if you have the clips enabled as well. You basically see nothing and it would be easier to use a phone. And that's also what helped me back from really using the iPad with DaVinci Resolve. But if we now go to effects and we scroll down to the film look creator, Quick disclaimer, I think you will need the studio version to use the film look creator. Um, I'm not sure if it is available in the free version, so maybe if someone can confirm in the comments, that would be helpful. So let's apply this effect to the node. And as you can see, it has done some changes, but now before we do anything else, we hit Shift and F on the keyboard. And this is gonna open up this kind of full page view. 
It's not full screen, of course, but you can zoom in if you want to, to see a bit more. And it's just a much bigger preview than this one right here. And also you get all of the controls in a kind of Lightroom style like this on the right, which is just much easier than going always back and forth between all of those tools right here. So let's go back with Shift and F and we can now start to color grade this video here. And look at that, with just one node, we have got a whole color grade in a very easy way. And now it gets even better. Uh, we can switch back with Shift and F and we can now select all of those clips here on the timeline uh, with Shift and click. And let's now go back to the first clip and we can do a long click with the left mouse button on this clip here that we already graded and hit apply grade. It's going to ask us if we want to replace it. Yes, replace it. And now we have all of those um, grades applied. We can now switch the view again, go back in here. And now we can also switch between the clips with our arrow key. So up and down arrows, you can just hit the arrows and you're going to see all of the different clips right here. And those are not all shot on iPhone. So for example, this clip here is shot on the Sony a7S III and this will need a different color space and gamma, which is going to be S Gamma 3 Cine and S Log 3. But as you can see now, it looks much different. We can also adjust the whole thing a bit like this, maybe use a different film look. And that's it. We can now also go back again with Shift F and select all of the clips that were shot with the Sony a7S III as well, like all of these clips here. And now again, let's do a long click, apply the grade, replace. And if we open up this clip now, it will be the correct color space and gamma. And of course you can do the same thing with photos as well. So let's go back to our um, media pool here and let's also import a photo. We will choose this one here. But of course, photos have a different color space. So Rec. 709 would not be uh, the right one. For photos, I would recommend using sRGB. Just switch that right here. And this will be now correct. And you can also adjust um, the resolution. So if you see, let's go um, to the media pool. Let's uh, click the photo and just hit metadata. You can see the resolution right here for 240 by 2832. We can now just go to our settings here, 2832, and hit save. And this will now be the right resolution for the photo. We can go to the color page, hit Shift F again. Uh, let's just use this grade for the photo. Go back to this view. Now we can hit clean slate. And now we can do our adjustments here. Um, of course, this photo is already edited, but um, well, we can still adjust, you know, we can still adjust the look, maybe even add a film look and see how this works. Haven't really tried this, to be honest. Let's see where it gets us. Yeah, vignette, some halation. This looks actually quite nice because halation is not something you get in Lightroom. So let's see how this looks full screen. And this actually looks quite nice. You get this kind of vintage vibe because of the halation and the film look. And now the easiest way to probably uh, export your images, now go to your gallery, but you also have to hit Shift F again to see the other view. Open up the gallery right click on your new still and just export it uh, just choose any location and make sure to select jpeg here now hit open and your image will be ready in your files app and that's it in my opinion really the easiest and best way to work on an ipad with the venture is off if you like this video please leave a like below and also subscribe to the channel it really helps and i'm gonna make more videos very soon i'm gonna see you in the next one